Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video you're going to build here one yes face recognition based a smart attendance system using python and machine learning so without any further ado let's get started on the video so well so this is the demo applications you can see here one cool ui you can see a requirement which requirement that i needed and also my youtube channel name and you can also see here on web app so which one show the attendance in real time so let's say i'm going to take the attendance so for that i need to press o from the keyboard attendance taken so i press the o from the keyboard and to take the attendance you can also uh, hear one speak of the jarvis voice like that and now you can see here it automatically reload the attendance for me in my web apps right so in this video we are going to just make this out right so you're going to build this project in three steps. In step number one, you're going to collect the user data. I mean, user face and with their name. And step number two, we are going to test it using the machine learning algorithm. And after three number part, we are going to use one web app in order to show the attendance. So without any further ado, so let's get started and start the step number one. So in order to build the face recognition system, we need to also collect the new face data with their corresponding name. So in order to collect the face data, first we need to create here one camera. And after that, we need to detect the face of the person. Then we are going to crop the face from the frame and we are going to store it inside one PKL file. So that's it. So now we are going to create one camera and also one face detection system. So in order to detect the face, we're going to use here one technique that's called the cascade classifier. And you can see here one file is already available. That's called hair cascade frontal default.xml file, right? So now I'm going to create here a new Python file here. Let's say at faces.py. Well, so our Python file is created. Now we are going to create here the webcam, right? So in order to create one webcam, we need one library that's called OpenCV. So in order to install this library, you need to open your command prompt and type here pip install and the library name is called OpenCV Python, right? So this is the library, you need to install that. So I'm not going to install it because it's already installed in my system. I'm just going to click at a crop, close that. Well, so now I'm going to import here the CB2 module that I'm installed, import CB2. Then in order to create here one camera, we need to also create here one video capture object. In order to capture the frame so for that i'm going to use here cb2 dot video capture and inside that i need to pass here zero if you using here zero that's mean it will open your inbuilt webcam on your laptop if you use any external webcam you need to pass here as a one so you already see that how can you use that external webcam also now we are going to store it inside one variable let's say video video equal to cb2 dot video capture and inside this argument we're going to pass here zero now we're going to create here one infinite loop. So let's say while true. And we are going to read this using this video.read method. And this video.read method actually gives here two values. Number one is one Boolean value that your webcam is okay or not. And second value is nothing but our frame. So let's say red and frame. Well, now we got the frame, right? Now what are going to do here? We are going to show the frame also. So for that you can use your cb2 dot im show and inside that it will it will actually take one window name you can see on the recommendations window name so let's keep here one window name let's call frame and also your material so the material is nothing but our frame well now we need to add here one keyboard binding function so that we can break the loop that means this infinite loop so for that you can use your cb2 dot wait key let's call wait key i give here one for infinite time so how it will actually waiting for one keyboard binding functions. So let's assign it to variable that's called k. If k equal to equal to ORD, let's say I'm passing key from the keyboard and this infinite loop will be gone. And also our video frame will be gone. Now after gone that, we need to also release the video which you are actually uh, stored, right? So let's say cb video dot, let's call release. And after that, we are going to destroy the all window. CB2 dot destroy all windows. This one. Now what I'm going to do here, we can run the code on the terminal. And you can also click in this button in order to run the code, right? So let's try this out using terminal. Let's say Python at faces. 
dot to hit enter on the keyboard now let's hit enter and it will open the webcam for you so now you can see it open the webcam so now what you're going to do here you're going to detect the face of the person right so for that you're going to use the hair cascade algorithm right so let's press q from the keyboard let's show it out you can see this is the q and gone fine so it worked fine now we're going to detect the face of the person right so for that what i can do here we are going to use these hair cascade frontal default.xml file this file that i'm going to use here so let's copy the path from here and let's create here one variable let's call faces equal to cb2 dot cascade classifier and inside that we need to give the path of that so this path of the folder of the file is actually uh, inside the data folder so now data folder we just go to the data folder and dot xml okay well we access the faces so now what are going to do here we are going to detect the face using the multi scale right so in order to uh, detect the face we need to also uh, convert this frame into grayscale because this cascade classifier is actually working well on grayscale images so for that what are going to do here you're going to convert them into the bgr2 grayscale because OpenCV read the image in a BGR format. So let's say cb2.cbt color. That's it. And you're going to pass it the frame and our color code or conversion. Let's say cb2.bgr2 gray. Fine. Now that's fine. Let's store into one variable. Let's call it gray skill or it's ESA gray. Now we need to detect the faces, right? So let's so now let's detect the face using this hair cascade frontal default.xml file. So let's make it face detect. Okay. So now we are going to use this one call face detect detect dot detect multi scale. This one. And we are going to give here our grayscale frame that we convert here from BGR to grayscale. Then we are going to give here the threshold value 1.3 and comma 5. And we're going to store it inside one variable that's called faces well so now what we are going to do here we are going to actually uh, get the coordinate value from the faces so we are going to get here four coordinate value one is x and y and w and h so x and y is nothing but the coordinate and w and h are nothing but the width and the height of the images so for that what are you going to do here you're going to iterate through all the value from here so for that you're going to use here the for loop or you can say for each loop so let's say x comma y comma w comma h in faces right then we are going to uh, create here one rectangle so that we can see that our face is detected so for that you need to use your cb2 dot rectangle that's called rectangle and you're going to pass your our original frame so that we don't need to see the grayscale frame at all then we are going to give here the coordinate value so that should be x and y and you need to also give here the width and the height of the channel so let's say x plus w and y plus is that's our coordinate value that we are going to detect that and then what are you going to do here we are going to actually add here another parameter that's called the color that we need to give then we have the thickness and also the line tab right now we're going to give here one color so let's give here the red color that's a 50 50 comma 255 and also give here the thickness so let's give your thickness as one now it will detect the faces for me right so now if i'm going to save it and i can run the code from here let's click on this button and run the code so well it will try to open my webcam yep you can see here it will open my webcam and also detect my face right cool see how cool is it to detect my face now what we're going to do here we're going to cut the faces right we're going to cut the faces and store into one list so that we can actually make it in a pickle file right so let's go on the whiteboard and understand that how can actually crop the faces and how can you store it and how it will actually look like so well so we already did the face of the person so let's assume that this is one person i'm also got it out right so this is detected right so when you detect the face using the detect multi scale function right so we actually got here four value so one is nothing but our x and y coordinate 
and you also got the width and the height of the images or the person pages then you can actually create here one rectangle like that so now what are going to do here we're going to just crop this rectangle this whole rectangle you're going to crop that from this point to from this point four point then we're going to store it inside one list that's called faces list we are going to store it and also we need the name with their corresponding faces right so for that we are going to crop them right so how can you actually crop them let's say we are going to go go from the x coordinate to x plus w because this is nothing but our x coordinate and this is our y coordinate so let's assume that this is x coordinate and this is the y coordinate so this is the height and this is the weight of the channel so if i'm trying to crop this based on our width and the height so we can use here this x to x plus x plus w and we need to use here y into y plus h like this way so that we can actually crop this uh the faces and after cropping the faces we are going to resize the images let's say 15 cross 50 cross 3 because this is one nothing but called rgb images so you can just crop them and after cropping them we are going to store it inside one list and after storing in the inside the list we're going to convert it into the one pkl file okay so let's say we're going to collect in here the 100 images so based on the 100 images we got here 100 vector now we need to give here the names with their corresponding vector let's say i am give here one name let's say my name let's say chando so with their corresponding name so we need to also give here this vector and also the name right so we're going to make this like this kind of way and so we have the 100 vector 100 vector like that and we have also the name let us see let's see so this is my vector this is my vector if new face is coming so again again create one vector with the 100 100 row and 100 column then we need to also give here the name let's say misho so like that we're going to do that and after that we're going to use here one machine learning algorithm in order to calculate the distance of each data point then we're going to recognize the face right so that's it now what are going to do here we're going to crop the face of the person using this formula so well so we already take the faces now we're going to crop the faces is in the formula that you should discuss about that so let's say from the frame we're going to go from y to y plus s and x to x plus w and number of channel that are going to take so let's say y to y plus s and we're going to go from x to x plus w then we'll take the all of number of channel now let's assign into one variable let's call crop image now we are going to resize the images so that we can uh, resize them in one single size that means all the faces size should be equal so for that we need to also resize the frame so we can use here cb2.resize method in order to resize the frame so we're going to give here the crop images and we need to also give here the size of our images in a tuple format so we're going to give here 15 comma 15 and it will resize the images in this size and now let's assign into another variable let's call resize image well now our image is also resized and we also crop our images now we need to store it inside one list so for that we're going to create here one empty list so let's say faces data is an empty list then we're going to when image is actually resized we're going to store it inside the faces data right so for that you can use here the faces underscore data and you're going to append you're going to append the resize image so this is our resize image this one so when uh, the resize image or image taken by the webcam is completed as a hundred so you can do break the loop right so for that you can actually add here another condition here so let's say our land of the face data equal equal to 100 we're going to also break the loop well and we need to also stop them the faces data should be appended right so for that we are going to give here another condition let's say if length of the face data let's say this face data is less equal 100 and also we are going to take the images after uh when after 10 frame so that you're going to use here another condition so that you can give here some poses smart poses so that's why you're actually using this one so let's say i uh, modulus 10 equal to equal to zero 
and we are going to actually take the images and store it inside the list right so you need to also increment it so let's say i equal to i plus one so that's it and we need to also initialize the i so let's say i equal to zero in initial positions you can also see it in a put text so for that you need to use here cb2 dot that's mean how many picture defects you've taken you can see it inside your frame so for that you're going to use here the cb2 dot put text and inside that you need to give here the frame then you can you need to give here any kind of text so i'm going to see the land of the faces that's mean how many faces is actually going to collect it so for that you're going to use your land of face data that's mean this face data that's it and you need to also convert it into a string because put text taking in a string a value it's, and land of the face is nothing but one integer value so that's why it gave me error so now we are going to give here the origin or you can set the coordinate so let's give you 15 comma 15 and the font face let's say cb2 dot uh, there are so many font face actually available inside the cb2 let's say font hash a complex and give here one font of scale so let's give here one and color let's say give here the red color let's say 15 comma 15 comma 255 and the thickness let's give here one okay so now let's run the code and see that uh how it actually work and after storing the data or the face data inside our list we need to also store it inside one pkl file so that we can actually use it later on how we are going to build our machine learning model so well i am going to run the code using clicking this button i need to open the webcam and now you can see here it, it will detect my faces and also it will take the images and after 10 iteration you can see here how cool is it actually taking the images I can give you a pause see how cool is it now what you're going to do here we are going to actually store it inside one pkl file and also the name of the person that you're going to detect i'm use here q and it will i hope it will automatically gone okay it's cap lock is on that's why it's not gone well now we are going to store these faces data according their name of the person so let's say i am going to create here one variable that's called name and I'm going to use here the input method in order to take the input uh, for the username. So let's say enter your name and it will take the username from the user, right? So after taking all the images, so high and loop is gone, I mean loop is back, then you're going to store the face data with their name in one pkl file. So for that you need to also import here the pkl so let's say pkl pkl so that we can use it later on and after that we can build here one machine learning model well so now we are going to convert this data in, into numpy array we need to also import the numpy right so let's say import numpy as mp well so we have our face data now we're going to convert it inside numpy array let's say face as data this is our faces data and you're going to use your np dot as array these functions that you're going to use here and inside that you're going to pass here our face data and we need to also reshape them i mean reshape the face data so that we can give into inside one uh, machine learning model so we need to make in flatter so we have 100 images so the shape should be 100 cross 100 cross 3 like that 100 cross 100 cross we have the 15 cross 15 cross 3 like that and we are taking the 100 images that means vector size should be the 100 so for that we are going to reshape them so let's say faces data dot reshape so this is called reshape so reshape and you're going to use here 100 minus 1 that's in all the value and now we're going to store into the same variable that's called faces underscore data. Well, so now we convert our data into the numpy array. Now we're going to store it inside the pkl file. So well, we convert our data into numpy array. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to store it inside one pkl file so that we can use it later on, right? So for that, you need to import here another library that's called OS. You can say also operating system. In order to check that any file is available or not, you can also using this one you can also create here a new folder like os.amkdeal 
And now we're going to use here obs.listd in order to check that the inside the data folder, any file is available or not. Let's say I'm taking the input for the user for the first time. Just I'm running the file for the first time. That's mean no file is available. So now we need to check that is there any file is available or not. If the file is available, we're going to just overwrite it. So let's check it for the name code. So let's say if names dot pkl, right? Not in os dot list. So os dot list directory help us to create here one list directory of our files. So let's say inside this data folder, we don't have any names dot pkl file. Okay, then what are you gonna do here? So if the names.pkill file is not available, so what are you gonna do here? We are going to create here one new file for that, right? So for that, you're gonna use here with open and inside the data folder. So let's say data, we're gonna use here names.pkill as app. Then you're going to save it inside our uh, pkill file. So for that, you're gonna use here pkill.dump and this will take two parameter one is your object and another one is a file so you have the file but we don't have the objects i mean the names right so we are going to actually taking the 100 images right so for that you are going to create here on the vector or you can say list of 100 100 names so for that what i'm going to do here you're going to make it multiple with 100 that we have our name then you're going to store it inside the variable that's called names right then you're going to just you're going to just pass it inside of a dump and of our file that you actually created well now this is for actually uh, nothing but uh, creating the names.pkl file if it is not available inside the data folder we need to also create here the list because this is one kind of list of backdoor so that's why you need to convert it into the list now it's fine now if the names.pkl file is available inside a data folder, that's when you are taking the input for the another users. I mean, you are adding number two phase. So for that, you're going to load this pkl file inside the data folder. So for that, what are you going to do here? Else conditions. Else, that's when if the names.pkl file is available. So we're going to load it from using this with method. So for that, I'm just going to copy this one. Just copy this one. I'm going to pass it here. Then I'm going to load it. Just load it. So load the file inside a data folder then we are going to override it right so let's store into the variable that's called names so let's say names now we are going to add this names add this name that's been overrided right i mean adding the extra one that's extra name let's say i have the name i have the data of let's say chando now i'm going to add here another data let's say called misho right so let's say this data is already available now i'm going to add here the mishu data i mean collecting the face for another user now what i'm going to do here we are going to just concatenate it i mean concatenate the new data so for that what i'm going to do here we are going to use here let's say names simple names equal to names i mean these names plus name cross 100 simple this one right so we need to also make it inside one list right i'm going to also remove this because this will give me the error now we store the names now what are you going to do here we need to also dump it inside our data folder so for that i am just going to copy this and i am going to again paste it and now our file is created well so this is for the names.pkl file now let's do the same thing for face data.pkl file so i'm just going to paste it and now I'm going to convert them should be the faces or underscore data. And I'm going to copy this. And this should be the same. This should be the same. This should be the same. But there should be some changes uh, based on the data. Right? So when the data is not available, we are going to just um, give here the face data that is available inside my face data. So for that, we just going to remove them just we're going to remove them and we're going to just pass here the faces data i mean this faces data now if if i'm trying to add here the new faces that mean override the face data so for that what i'm going to do here we just load it let's say this is the face data face is data or let's say uh, faces then we are going to add it so let's say faces 
equal to np dot append np dot append we are going to use their append method and inside that we are going to pass here our faces and also our face data i mean the data that we actually converted converted and also the file or not the file actually also the axis the which axis that you're going to save it so you're going to save it in the axis number zero now we actually save our names.pk uh, names.pkl file inside our name data and also our face dot inside the face.pkl file we also have the face data right so well we do have one mistake we don't give here the mode of that so we need to also give the mode so this is nothing but called uh write mode so that's why you need to use here the wb then we need to actually use here the mode of that so this is nothing but reading writing if you're trying to load it so you need to use here the rb so this is for load so you need to use here the rb so this for read mode then this is dump mode so i need to convert it should be the into the write mode and this is the loading part or dump part dump part again write mode and this is the dump part so you need to also make it should be the wb so if you load it so you need to use here the rp mode i mean the read mode that means you, you are reading this file inside the directory right so now so well so now let's run the code and trying to add the faces on our data folder and now it will open the webcam and you need to also enter your name so let's give my name let's say Mishu and now it will open my webcam so as you can see here it already take my pictures and you can see it already take 47 picture like that and you can see so it will take the 100 picture at a time and after 10 frame it will take the picture so that you can give some pose right you can see here i, I can give some pose right well so after 100 picture it will actually save it inside of the pickle file so see our uh, two pickle file is created one is faces underscore data dot pickle file and another one is called the names underscore pickle file now what are going to do here we are going to test it out i mean we are going to make our peak organization system using machine learning algorithm so now let's get started and jump with part number two so well we complete our step number one so our step number one is nothing but collect the data and now our step number two is nothing but using machine learning algorithm to classify the faces okay or you can say the face recognition so in order to recognize our face we are going to use here one clustering algorithm from machine learning it's called knn right so how it actually work here so it is available inside our library that's called scikit learn so this is one python machine learning library and inside that knn is available we can use that so now let's see how it actually work so let's assume that uh, we have two face. Let's say one face for let's say Chandu and another one face for let's say Mishu, right? So we have 100 vector or you can say the 100 list or you can say 100 picture, right? So we have also the 100 picture for Mishu. So let's assume that this is one dimensions. And all the vector value, all the vector value are actually floating like that, right? Are floating like that, right? Floating like that. Or you can assume that uh, we have some just dot value like that, right? So there are some values for Chandu and some values for Mishu are actually, I'm just going to float it, right? So let's assume that I am going to test it. So new data is coming from the webcam of our inbuilt webcam or external webcam. So higher new data is coming. Let's say this value is right now uh, our stand right now there. So based on the value, it will try to calculate the distance from the each nearest value, right? Each nearest value, each nearest value. then. If the nearest value is closer to this value that's coming from webcam, so this is nothing but our face. I mean our recognized face. Again, so let's say we have the shape, uh, we have the coordinate like that. Let's say I have some value, right? So let's say new data is coming from the webcam. 
So this is our new data. This is our new data. Now the can and actually help us to calculate the distance from the each vector. Let's say this is our new data. So this is our nearest value. This is also our nearest value. This is also nearest value. So it will actually calculate the nearest distance for the each data point. Nearest value of the each data point. Let's say I'm going to give here my neighbor should be five. So it will calculate the five nearest value from, from the vector that is actually coming from the webcam. Then it will actually taking the first value at a face as, I mean the recognized one. So if the new face is coming, maybe it should be Chando or it should be Misho. So it is closer to Chando. So it will actually return the value as a Chando, as a face, right? So that is how the canon actually work. So now we are going to use it in order to detect our face, right? So now let's go on the BS score. So well, so now we are going to build our machine learning algorithm in order to classify our faces. So for that, I'm going to create here a new Python file. Let's say test.py. Well, so now I am going to import here my machine learning, you can see the machine learning uh, algorithms. So for that, I'm going to import it from sklearn. So let's say from sklearn, sklearn dot neighbors. I'm going to import here the KNN. It's called the K neighbors classifier because this is one classification tax, right? And also we need to create the camera and also we need to detect the face. And after detecting the face, we are going to actually uh, classify that whose face is actually detected. Is it Mishu or is it Chando or anything else, right? So for that, I'm just going to copy the code that I do in the add faces. And I'm going to do some modification here. So let's say I'm going to paste it here. So we need to load the faces underscore data.pkl file and also the names.pkl file from our data directory. So for that, I'm going to use this load functionality. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here, right? I'm just going to paste it here, just paste it. So we load our faces, sorry, names. So names is nothing but our levels. So this is one supervised stack, let's say. So let's say levels. And also we need to load our faces data. So this should be the faces uh, underscore data dot pickle file. So just I'm going to load it. Well, so now this should be the faces. So let's say faces and our faces data also loaded. So now what I can do here, I'm just going to remove here some lines. We don't need the name and the iteration part. We don't need also the list because you already saved the data and also we don't need to append the data. We're just going to fit it using the machine learning algorithm. And also we don't need the put text. And we can also remove this condition from here. And we can also remove all the lines from here. That's it, right? So we load our pickle file correctly. Now what we're gonna do here, we are going to uh, use the can and in order to feed this face and also the levels. So for that, we are going to create here one object for that. So let's say can nearest neighbors classifier. And inside this, I'm going to pass here the neighbor should be five that we already discussed on the whiteboard. So let initialize into the variable that's called KNN. And now I'm going to feed it uh, based using our faces and the labels. So for that, you're going to use your KNN.feed. Then we, we have our faces and also you have our labels. I mean, these labels, right? So we feed our algorithm using the faces and with their labels. Now you're going to predict it, right? So in order to predict them, so we already resize our images in 50 to 50, right? Right, 50 to 50. So for that, what I can do here, we need to also make it flatten because if I go on the last of the portions of the code, you can see 30 third line to reshape our data, right? So because we are going to testing it out, so we are going to take the one images from the one frame, I mean, in the single frame. So that's why we need to also flatten it and also we need to reshape it, right? Because you're going to pass it inside the machine learning algorithm. So that's why you need to make it in one single vector. And after that, you're going to reshape it. And you're going to reshape it one comma minus one. One means you're going to classify the one image at, the at a time. So that's why you just make it reshape. And now after reshaping, we are going to pass here our uh, algorithm. So you're going to use canon.predict. And you're going to simply pass here our resized images that is actually coming from here. So resized images. So we got here five value. I mean five nearest distance. So you can see how we actually pass here the neighbor should be five. So that's why I'm just going to make it let's output equal to canon.predict and this one. Now I'm going to add here one put text. 
So let's say CB2 dot put text. So this is the put text and I'm going to give here my image. So this is, should be the frame and also my text. So text is nothing but our output. So let's say output. So we have the five value. We are going to access the first index. So that's why I give here output zero. So it's better if you, do, if you don't get any error, it's better we can actually uh, typecasting it in a string format, right? Then we have the origin that we hire. We are going to see, I see it. So we're going to see it uh, above the y axis. So that's why we are going to minus from here. And then we are going to give here the font face. So let's say CB2 dot. There are so many font are available. Let's say font hair share complex. And now we have the font scale. Let's give here one and let's give here one color. So let's give here the white color. So let's two five five two five five. And now also we need to give here the thickness. So let's give a thickness of one. Well, so now our uh, page recovery system is done. And if I am just click here on this run button and run the file and it will open the webcam and it's trying to detect my face with also my name. Now you can see here detect my face correctly. And also you can see here my name is also appeared up here that we actually collected. So that's all right. So now you can do add here one rectangle so that it looks so cool and looks so good at all. And also you're going to create here one create here one background so it just looks very cool that you see in earlier in the demo video, right? So I'm going to press the Q from the keyboard and it will automatically gone, right? So now what are you gonna do here? You're gonna just pass here some blank rectangle so that it just looks so cool. So well, I'm just going to paste here some code. Okay, this is really simple. You can also play with them. I'm just going to save it and again run the code. And now I'm going to see the output, right? Just to wait, it will open the webcam. Yeah, now you can see here it looks very cool. And you can see my name is also appeared up here, Michu. And that's really good. Fine. Now what I'm going to do here, you're going to add here the background so that it looks much more better, right? So let's add the background here. So well, I already passed here my background.png file. So this is my background.png file. So now I am going to actually uh, set the frame uh, in this coordinate. So for that, you need to also load the background images using the OpenCV. So now let's go on here and try to load these images. So for that, I am going to use here cb 2imread and I'm going to read it. So I need to give you the path. So the path is nothing but background.png. So let's say background.png and let assign into the variable that's called image background. And now I am going to just uh, pass it uh, just inside this rectangle. So I just got here some coordinate value. I just play with them and I'm going to pass here the value, right? So now if I run the code here, don't worry about the code. You can just go get this code on the video description of the GitHub link. You can just go here and you can play with them. So it's not actually uh, again pop up. So I think I forget to show the image background because you need to also show it in the image background because we actually passed the frame already. So that's why it's not showing up. So again, run the code. Well, so now you can see here it looks much better and you can see it also did my face correctly and the background well so you can see here uh, requirement python opencb scikit learn and this is my channel name knowledge doctor so make sure to subscribe to the channels also so now what you're going to do here you're going to take the attendance right so you can see here press o for take attendance so now what are you going to do here you're going to do this one right because how you press o it's not taking the attendance so you need to also store the attendance inside one csv file so for that, we're going to import the CSV also. So let's do this one. So now we're going to actually add the attendance. So for that, we need to also import here the CSV. So we are going to actually store the attendance in uh, two column. That should be the name and also the time. And also we need to have one attendance folder. So we need to also create here. So let's say attendance folder and inside this attendance folder you have the attendance with their corresponding date so 
we need to also import here time because we need to also uh, store the attendance based on our time and also the date so for that you need to also import the date time so let's say from date time i am going to import here the date time well now i am going to create here one instance of that so for that i'm using time dot time and now i'm going to pass it inside our date time so that we can actually get here some dating format so let's say date time dot date time so this is called date time and from the date time i need to import the steam time right i mean stf time so let's say is tier of time so no is tier not from time stem inside the time stem just pass here the time and now you're going to actually get the tier of time now we need to give here the date month and uh date then we have the month and we have the year right so for that you need to use here the one double quotation and we have our date so percentage date and we have our month and we have our year right so date month and year so we got our date right now we need to also take that time uh, because we're going to show it inside our attendance so that's why we are going to also copy this line and also create here one time stamps so there should be time stamps so that time should be the hour and there should be the minute and also have the second right that's fine so this is nothing about time stamp okay that's with time stamp well and now we need to also create here two column of list so let's say this call the column names equal to we have the name in our csv file and also we have the time right we have the time you can also add here the date that's your text now we need to take the attendance right so for that i'm going to create here one variable that's called attendance attendance equal to we have our output output zero and also we have our time right so this is nothing but in a string format and we have our time stamp so let's say time stamp well so we store our attendance uh, inside one list now what are we going to do here we are going to check that is there any file is available inside this attendance folder or not if the let's say today is right now 6th april so if the date is right now 6th april so it will just overwrite this data inside the folder so we need to also check that if there any file is available inside the attendance folder so for that you're going to use here the os so let's say os.path.is file so let's say is file because we're going to checking for the file so inside the attendance folder so let's say attend dance and uh, we have the attendance file so let's say attend dance and the attendance file containing with date and with having the dot csv right dot csv as the extensions so if there are any file is available like that so that's called exist so if any file is available like that we are going to just overwrite our attendance i mean you're going to just add it after the attendance so how can anyone press o from the keyboard and will take the attendance so for the if k equal to equal to ord and i'm just going to press here the o you can give here a smaller capital it's up to you so let's say it exists i mean if the file is exist so we are going to do one tux right if the file is not exist we are going to create here new column for that we need to create here the column for name we need to create the column for the time so let's say else so what you're going to do here you're going to just open this file so with open we are going to copy this one and we're just going to copy this the file format i mean you're going to open this file inside our directory okay it's not actually it's not actually created right now fine actually open it and we need to also modify it so we can actually use here the alternate one just a so let's as csv file so after that we're going to create here one writer for that csv file so for that you're going to use your csv that you already import then you are going to use your csv uh, dot writer so use this writer i'm just going to create here the method of that writer and now i'm going to assign into the variable is called the writer equal to csv dot writer now i'm going to create here one rule 
and also the column. First, you need to create your own column because you're going to create this attendance for the first time. So for that, you're going to use here this writer dot write uh, row. So that's called write uh, row. This one we are going to pass here our column names. Okay, this one columns names, and also you need to pass here our attendance. So let's say write dot write row. So this is our write row, and we are going to pass here our attendance so this should be the writers or oh, these are our attendance right so attendance well so i'm going to just pass it here attendance and now if i am uh up that I, I need to also close this csv file let's csv file dot close just you need to close it so now if the file is already exist so what you can do we are going to just uh actually uh necklet the column part so i am going to just neglect this column part we don't need it so now our attendance is saved inside our csv file so if i run the code here and try to check this out that is really working fine or not so i'm just open the it's open the webcam well so now what i'm going to do here i'm just going to press o from the keyboard so o okay we got some error so see expect one argument uh we got zero okay we need to actually pass here the argument so you forget it, you need to pass here this CSV file and also the CSV file. That's why you got this error. You can see attendance file is actually created. You can see attendance file is created, but no attendance here because we got the error, that's why. So if I run this file again, so it's not, it's just override this file. It's not creating here the another file. You can see here the date. Okay, sorry for that. Date is right now seven. So you can see here again, again, I press two, but two button from the keyboard. Just need to take in the attendance for the two times. So if I press Q from the keyboard and if I go here and you can see attendance taken, right? It uh, take the attendance in two times. It uh, take the attendance in two times, right? Now you can see your names and the title is not actually appeared because we got here the one error. So now if I am trying to remove this file, again, delete this file, just I'm going to delete it. And if I am going to save it file again, and if I run the file again, then you can see it clearly, just to wait. Okay, so I press O, again press O, and press Q. If I go here, now you can see name and time is appear, right? So name, you can see here the time, okay? And this is actually appeared on here, okay? So now what I can do here, uh, we are going to uh, create here one app so that you can also see it clearly. And also that has some problem when the attendance is taken we can also give here one sound so also let's give here one sound so that you can actually hear it uh, clearly that attendance is taken like that right so well so now i'm going to paste here the code uh, for speak uh, it's for it's just only for windows machines so we can just use this speak one just speak one we're just going to copy these functions or you can say method so high and the attendance is taken i mean when you press q for all from the keyboard and it will just normally speak let's say attendance taken right you can also give here one time dot sleep let's say attend uh attend dance taken right so taken so i am just <laughs> play with the caps lock so we can also give here some time dot sleep so that after five seconds it will actually uh, sleep for the program and so that you can actually see it clearly that attendance is actually taken right so now i'm going to run the code for again and it will open the webcam and you can also hear it well you can see here uh webcam is open uh so you need to hear that i need to also use my headphone so let's say i press o from the keyboard attendance taken well so you can hear that attendance taken one sound and also frame is saved for five seconds so that you can clearly think that yes attendance is taken right so again attendance taken so you can see here attendance is taken well so that's fine so now what i'm going to do here we're going to see it one web application that is in earlier so in order to build our web app we are going to use here the stream lit right so let's try to build this out and also we're going to test it out with another person because we have just one person mishu so just we have one data so we are going to also test it out with the another person so that you can also get the clear graphic about it. So I'm going to press key from the keyboard and it automatically click on. Now we're going to create here on the web app so that we can see the attendance in real time. 
you don't need to go this folder again and again you can show it inside one web app so let's say i'm going to use here app.py so in order to create the web app i'm going to use here the stream lead so let's say import the stream lead stream lead as st so in order to load the data from the attendance folder we need to import here the libraries called pandas right pandas as pd so we are going to copy this one because this is our file extensions so now i am going to create here one data frame let's say df equal to pd dot read csv and i'm going to just pass here the value i mean our attendance so that's it well so we have the date so you need to also you need to also copy the code from here so i'm going to copy this one and i need to also import the date time so yes that's it we need to also import the time and also you need to import the date time let's say import okay import time and also we need to import date time so let's say from date time i am going to import here the date time that's the date time that's it now i'm going to save it and also show it inside one data frame so for that you need to use st dot uh, data frame so this is our data frame now we're going to add it the df and you're going to make some style so for that you need to use the style dot if i'm trying to highlight the max we can actually give use here the highlight max so let's give here highlight max in the axis number zero so that you can see it in row row or columns it should be column so now if i am trying to run the file from here and uh the command should be stream lead run app.py it will open this inside one local host you need to copy the link and paste it inside one browser so well i am opening my browser and i'm going to paste the link and now you can see the attendance see the attendance is taken okay let's go on the setting and run and save and the white mode and also try to make it light so that you can see it clearly well so you can see here the attendance right you can make it full so that it's come inside in the middle so you can see here two attendance is three or four attendance is taken so now we're going to run the code and try to see it in real time so well now i'm going to run the test.py file and just uh, open this file and it will open the webcam now i am going to test it on the web app also so let's open the web app so here is our web app right now what i can do i'm just going to uh, press o from the keyboard attendance taken and attendance is taken if i go on here and right now you can see a zero one two three if i reload the applications and you can just see here the one attendance is also added you can see it four now the time but there is a problem that it's not auto delete i mean auto refresh when you take the attendance so we can also do it after two seconds we can directly auto refresh it that's been when we don't need to actually uh, use this reload button i mean we need to reload we don't need to reload the pages again and again so for that we can use here another code so that's called auto refresh so i'm just going to pass the code here so this is for steam that auto refresh so it will actually auto refresh the application after two seconds and we give here one just one kind of key so that it, you can also count it out that auto impress actually what right so i'm just going to save the file and I'm going to open my uh, webcam also and also my browser. So now you can see just a while uh, if I go here on the setting and run on save and also the wait mode. Now, if I am uh, reload the application and you can see here it will running the application after two seconds, just a while. You can see after two seconds, it will run in the whole applications. So if I'm trying to make it in the middle, so I can also do it. So let's make it in the, in the middle so now you can see that this file is in the middle and now if i press o from the keyboard, attendance taken the attendance is taken and you can see just a while it will auto delete the application i'm not touching the keyboard i'm not touching the keyboard you can see here after five seconds it will automatically reload the application i'm not actually reloading the application right so again see 
do okay that's it here i'm just going to see attendance taken so it will attendance is taken and now you can see just a while the attendance will taken well so that's fine so now we're going to test to it this out with another person uh, so that you can also think that yes it's work for different person also yes now test it out with the another person so let's go so that's So that's it for today now hope you enjoy this tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channels and also don't forget to hit the bell icon and i'll be back with the tutorial so till then take care and bye bye